Elon Musk, uh, who has been an interesting and good framer in many ways, um, because he understood that a constraint with electrical cars had gone away, and therefore electrical car cars could be rebuilt. You know, we have had electrical cars more than 100 years ago, but they were not very good. In fact, the first Porsche car was an electrical car more than 100 years ago. But the battery was not very strong and the, the, the motors weren't very good. Um, it required new technology. When the new technology came around about 15 years ago, Musk saw an opportunity and said, that's our chance. Let's build electrical vehicles. Same with SpaceX, his, his space company. Uh, unlike Jeff Bezos, SpaceX is actually quite profitable. He's making money because he's reusing the rockets. Why is NASA not reusing the rockets? Yes. Because yes. the technology wasn't there um, when the technology became available. That hard constraint loosened up. Elon Musk saw it and said, we can do that. So Elon Musk and uh, executives at SpaceX had children and they started a school for their children, just for their children. And in that school, they weren't teaching them necessarily arithmetic or learning poems by heart, but they were teaching them frames wow. so that the kids would acquire a repertoire of frames through games wow. and so forth. But they would require, uh, they would acquire, uh, you know, 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old uh, frames of game theory, of evolution, of you know, all these sort of, they had 40, identified 40 frames or so, and they were sort of teaching them the frames. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a very big success. It has tens of thousands of students uh, signed up around the world for an hour a week uh, mm -hmm. or an hour and a half of sort of play uh, around mental models, around frames. And my son is enrolled in that school um, for a very small amount of, relatively small amount of money. And he loves it. You know, he is 11, I'm now having conversations with him about prisoner's dilemma and payoffs and uh, like, you know, game theory. Uh, gosh, I did not even know game theory existed during high school. AI is incredibly valuable and powerful. Uh, it's incredibly valuable and powerful if we want to predict from the past into the future, for example. But it's not powerful if we want to imagine a future that doesn't yet exist, if it's just in our mind. Mm -hmm. What we humans can do, what the computer, what no AI can do is we can imagine a world that doesn't exist and then make it happen and then create that world. But again, the computer doesn't wake up one morning and say, you know, I like to make pigs fly because pigs are not flying and so predicting on the past the computer will never predict flying pigs but there could be a crazy inventor who wakes up one morning and says i want to make pigs fly and maybe then pigs will fly but maybe rockets will be uh, reused maybe cars will move from the internal combustion engine to the electric uh, engine and maybe we will be able to contain global warming by using more renewable energies, energy sources, as we're already doing in so many uh, different ways. And that's, that is my hope. Therefore, we don't need to vilify AI. We need just to put it in its place. Yes, I do have one, and, and it's one that may sound surprising. A lot of times we hear people defend or advocate for pluralism uh, in order to advance values, like values of democracy and so forth. We in framers argue that there is another reason for pluralism, and it has nothing to do with ethics or values. It has only to do with outcomes, with better decisions. Pluralism is the right means to come up with good decisions, individually and as a society. And so 
um, this isn't about doing the right thing. It's about doing the best thing. Mm 